What do you need? I just need you to drink this. Oh, and get crackers for the table. Mm. In the garage. Oh, uh, where are the crackers? Martin's got it. I'm on it, apparently. Oh, where are they going to? They're in the garage. No, no, they're behind the sofa. Mm. Oh. Mm. Why are you behind I mean, the sofa? I don't know why, but they were. That's where <laughs> I put them. Did you see the jumper? Oh, that's perfect. That. <laughs> Best one in the shop, obviously. I believe that. <laughs> um, where do you want these? Yeah. Babe, did you want wine? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the fire. Sure, yeah, makes sense. And you can have this one. Oh, thanks. Um, I'll just steal that. Careful, mate. She's hard to keep up with. Well, I'm learning that. Shut up and drink. Yes. Martin. Megan would have loved this. Everyone chasing around after her. <laughs> yeah. God, she had the best smile, didn't she? Lit up the room. When Megan first came to the group, we hiked up to Mondale Tarn. It took ages. <laughs> And then when we finally got there, Meg went swimming. <laughs> Freezing cold, chucking it down with rain. She didn't care. She was always impulsive like that. It was all about the moment. We're not exactly the wildest group. I mean, I'm the youngest, for God's sake. But after she went in, we all just stripped off and followed her. <laughs> she was... I just, I can't believe she's not here anymore. Sorry. Sorry. Come on. It's okay. Look, I'm the one who should have been there for her. I mean, what's the point of being a soldier if you can't protect your own family? You can't always be there for them. You got any uh, family in the area? No, no. Out in York. My brother lives there with his children. They're my world, you know. Love them to pieces. What are the names? Tom, he's six, and Pippa. She's three now. Good age gap. Yeah. I think it's better when the boy's the older one. Gives us a head start. You guys mature way faster than we do. Is it that way with you and Meg? Oh, yeah. When I was 15, I was still playing with toys, but Megan... She was planning her journeys around the world, what to see, what to do. Everything. Do you want me to go over what I told the police? Anything you can remember. Every little detail helps. Well, uh, I mentioned that Meg had just been out with her boyfriend. Yeah, I've seen him already. It's a dead end. Why didn't you tell me about your hiking group? 
Sure. Uh, it's mainly older couples from the town. Some are retired. <laughs> and me. <laughs> you don't look retired. No. No, I just like the community spirit of it, you know. Fair runners aren't bad either. <laughs> Did you um, hike anywhere else? You mentioned Mondale. Yeah, um, we also hiked from Heathley to Lyrell. That was via a place called Lennox Crag. Did you two go anywhere else, like nights out or anything? Oh yeah, you know, a couple of pubs maybe, but um, mainly it was hiking. We did plan to go to the festival together, but Meg was supposed to meet me there and, well, she never showed up. You're going to be there this year then, in a fox mask or something. A vixen, you mean? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, it's more fun when you've got someone to go with. Anyway, some people take it way too seriously now. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, there's always a fight at some point, and with those animal masks, you know, they, they just get away with it. Do they call themselves again? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, this group, you know, they travel in every year, same time for the festival. I think they like the traditions and rituals of it all, you know. But uh, I'm open to all sorts of beliefs, but if we see them on our walks, we just try and avoid them. Do you know where they might be? You don't think they'd have something to do with it? Anyone could. Um... Oh, a friend of mine saw them a couple of days ago, actually. Uh, the ruins at Emont Village. Emont Village? Yeah, it'll be on your sat-nav. Do you not need to write any of this down? I will. <laughs> okay. Is there um, anything else I need to know? No. No, I think you know everything else. Oh, Martin, um, are you here for a while or are you due back on tour? No. After five years in the field, I'm looking forward to some desk work, weirdly. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, I mean, look, um, you know, I'm, I'm here if, if you need anything. See you around, Tess.
All right, lads. Pretty impressive, eh? You got it all to yourselves. Until you arrived. Yeah, sorry. I've got a flat tire. Managed to park it just down the road. Do you know where the nearest garage is? I'm not from around here, as you probably guessed. Neither are we. Oh, really? Just looks like you made this place your own. You're not here for the festival, then? That's why I came. You not heard about it? Oh, I think it'd be right up your street. Parade, fireworks. Heard they might have a hog roast. I bloody miss it the way things are going. Can't have that. Sounds like a great night. Absolutely. I won't be staying late, mind you. When the kids go home, that's when the real nutters with squirrel masks come out. I heard they take it all a bit too seriously. So if you do go, keep your wits about you. Squirrel masks, eh? You have to be wary about people like that. Definitely. Anyway, best be off. Gotta call someone out about that tyre. Stick around. We'll give you some tips in defending yourself. Thanks, but I need to head off really. Hey, look. Like you said, we need to be careful of these nutters, right? Best of a couple of skills, just in case the time calls for it. I'll be staying right out of the way. You done any wrestling before? Many years ago, but I'm not in good form at the moment. Oh, come on, you look all right. Best to know your stuff in case you meet the big bad clan. Now, let's just start with the basic position. I need to get some practice in. We'll go again. No thanks. I think I got it. Hey, come on, you've got to hold your own against the clan, right? <laughs> Trust me. If I bump into them, they'll never see it coming. Well, I hope so. For your sake. I do not want to get in touch with the garage. We've got reception and uh, getting dark. You know what? I'll sleep in my car. It's fine. Cheers again for the tips, lads.
See? There's the clan I'm looking for. Just, just wait. People who scare and beat up innocent strangers. Oh yeah, definitely the right guys. I, I, I bet you prey on girls as well, don't you? Lost in the mountains, maybe. No way. No, fuck that. That's not us. You're lying to me. You sure you don't go sniffing around girls, doggy boy? The mask was just a scare. Don't tell me that. I know what you're doing those things. Come on, lads, let's dance naked and fuck some roadkill. Fuck off, no. Then maybe you spot a girl all alone and snatch her for one of your sick rituals. You do something to her. What? Sorry, can you not see it clearly? I'll burn your fucking retinas out! Look! I've never seen her before. I tell you, we don't do shit like that. We just want respect. People fear us that way. We're just a gang, that's it. Just your average gang. Wrestling in front of some fucking ruins! It's part of the show. For the festival. But we don't believe the fucked up rituals behind it. Talking to the underworld and the market of souls, come on. Market of souls? You really are nuts. No, we, d d we, d <laughs> we don't know shit about these things. It's only the older generations that believe in it. There were some right fucking weirdos who used to be in the clan. Any of them still around? Only one. He's a hermit now in the mountains, near Lennox Crag. Lennox Crag? Are you sure? There's a hut there. If you're looking for a psycho, he's fucking serious about that shit. He's your guy, just leave us alone. Pick up your furry friends and fuck off.
Hello? Oh, sorry, I didn't think there was anyone in. Oh, I'm in. I was looking for a place to rest my legs. I hiked from... Um... There isn't room here. Oh, I thought this was a three-person hut. Bothy. Pardon? It's a Bothy, and there's another a couple of miles west. It's just... Uh, the weather's on the turn and it'll be dark soon. We well, best get moving then. Sorry. I thought this place was for everyone to stay. Please, I won't be an inconvenience. Fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Better. Ah, back was killing me. Where the bloody hell? You lost something. I'm like that. I always need to know where everything is. It's gonna be a cold one tonight, isn't it? Hmm. Did you get many people staying here? Not really. Well, it must be nice having this place all to yourself. I've been staying in an inn for the past couple of nights. Nice and quiet, but I don't know. When you're new to an area, the sweet local stuff can seem a bit alien at times. Never too sure what to trust. I heard about this one place. Is it in Ireland or Wales? Cozy little B&B. &B. And the owner used to feed the scraps of the kitchen to these stray dogs. So eventually they just stuck around and kind of became part of the charm. I mean, they weren't diseased or anything, so. And the council were going to build a new bypass so people could get around the town a bit easier. And this new road was going to go straight past the B&B. &B. So the owner had the idea to expand and make the most of the situation. I mean, it was the only B&B &B for a good few miles. put up signs and adverts, even did a couple of local radio shows. He built a new car park with a water feature. Eventually added even more rooms to make it an even bigger hotel. And it worked. It was getting packed every night with businessmen and road workers. After a while, families and the tourists started coming. Then he started to get complaints about the dogs which I can understand with, you know, with all the young children running around. But the owner, he was really upset about it. I mean, these dogs, they were part of the charm of the place, right? So I guess he stopped feeding them because after a while they just disappeared. People stopped complaining and everything was good. The owner even managed to build a new house up in the hills. But then, apparently, one night there was a stag do from... Sweden, I think. And this one drunken lad wandered down to the kitchen, thinking it was the bathroom and pissed in the sink. <laughs> then he saw the massive freezer and just thought, help yourself. When he opened the freezer, guess what he saw? The dogs. All chopped up stored in the ice. Grim story, isn't it? Bastard councils with their new roads. 
something works for hundreds of years, then they come in, drown it in tarmac and call it modernisation. Absolutely. Now I come to think of it, that's part of the reason why I travel. To escape it all. You can't. It's taking over the country like a disease. I suppose people around here must still care about the history and tradition. I mean, they still celebrate stuff like the droving, don't they? Even that is corrupted. All people see is the tourism, the food vans. Most of the town, they watch it through their mobile phones. Traditions get buried. And the truth behind those traditions, and practices and rituals, oh well, that gets lost entirely. But there must be some people who still care. My little sister's the one who got me into it, actually. Although she did believe in fairies. <laughs> what it is to be a child. Oh no, this is when she was 23. Mm -hmm. She always believed that a fairy was there next to her. Stopping anything bad from happening. She came hiking in the area actually. She sent me a postcard and I just thought, wow. This place is perfect. So I just had to come and see it for myself. Well, it is impressive. You ever been to Mondale Town? Um, yes. She went hiking there with a group from the area. Managed to convince them to swim in the town. She's mad. Afterwards she came through here. Oh? She didn't stay here, did she? No, no, she didn't. But you have seen her before. Take another look. I won't blame you, it was a while ago. Uh, I do recognise her now, yes, but uh, she didn't stay. It's just... You didn't say anything the first time I showed you the picture. No, I, I wasn't certain. Okay. Did you speak to her? No, not really. I might have passed her out on the trails at some point. Funny thing. When she came through here, when you saw her, that was the last time she was seen. Ever. She disappeared after that. That is quite strange. Even stranger that it was the day before the droving festival, which would make it exactly a year ago today. What were those practices and rituals you were going on about? I don't Because I heard from the clan that you were the guy to talk to about that stuff. And you clearly are well educated in that area. I respect that. But you have to respect that my sister is missing. Do you know what happened to her? Come on, mate, you can tell me. I don't know anything. Do you not? You can't even look me in the eye, can you? I don't. What's your name again? We haven't really introduced ourselves. I'm Martin. What's your name? What's your fucking name? Brendan. Brendan. Nice to meet you, mate. There we go. So, what's the problem? You're going to tell me the truth? I know you know something, I can see it. 
I don't know anything. Look at you. Your legs are shaking. Your hands are sweating. Your eyes are bouncing all around the room. Your lips quivering. You say nothing, but your body tells me everything. I have nothing to say. I don't know. All these coincidences piling up. The clan, the festival, dangerous rituals. I mean, I might be out on a limb here, but it all seems to point back to you. I don't care how long it takes. You will tell me, you fucking freak. And we have all night. And after you've told me everything, I don't know what I'll do. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, Start slow. Uh, Ease you in. I don't hike. I don't give a shit about tradition. And I fucking love dual carriageways. What I do is I make people talk. And I'm very good at it. From the deepest cells in Bahrain, I've heard the darkest secrets from the sickest men in the world. I've made people talk who are far more committed than you. True believers who are bred from the age of five to fight a holy war. I made them speak. I made them speak in fucking verse! I made them give up their friends, their families, even their God. And you think you can stay silent about my own sister? What did you do to her? You believe in the underworld? I'll fucking take you there. <laughs> what did you do to her? <laughs> All right, here we go. What did you do, you cultist fuck? Where is she? I killed her. I killed her. You did. Okay. I did it. She's dead because of me. What? <laughs> because I told him. I told him.
killed who? Who did you tell? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Back in the day, traders were going to town for the droving, to bid on cattle and then auction their sheep. But a legend tells of one merchant who, who traded in something else. The souls of the dead. That you could do a deal with him to, to return a loved one to you from the underworld. But in return, you, you had to bring him the soul of another. Sometimes two or three, or whatever he deemed the right price. I've told people that legend for years. No one ever believed me. But he did. He, he, he truly believed me. Who? Oh. A hiker. I, I, I met him three years ago. He needed somewhere to stay the night. We started talking and he told me his wife had just died. So I told him all the stories, the, the, the legends. And I told him about the merchant. A few months later, I, I saw him again. And he told me that the merchant was real, that he'd met him. That he'd done a deal with him to, to get his wife back. He told me I'd been right all along. Oh, I didn't know what to think. Last year, he, he even brought a girl. <laughs> they met on the mountain and, and came here together. The three of us ate and, and talked all night. <laughs> she was so kind and open-minded. <laughs> Your sister breathed life into this place. I heard from some climbers she was missing. A few months later, I, I saw him for one last time. For the first time in years, he mentioned the merchant. He told me that the deal was almost done. I came back here, locked the door, and uh, tried to convince myself that what I was thinking couldn't be true. <laughs> and I nearly did. <laughs> I only ever wanted for people to believe in the same things I did. <laughs> Your sister's dead because I made him believe. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> there is one thing I don't get. Megan was impulsive, but she wasn't stupid. She would never have followed a stranger to a place like this. He wasn't a stranger. She knew him. Part of a hiking group from the town. They'd been walking together before. What was his name? Simon. It's a calendar. It's a calendar. It's a mystery calculator. Nice. 
that's a shame. That is a shame. Okay, you want to do the jerk? Yeah, come on. Focus on What did Cinderella say when the chemist lost her photographs? Um, it's midnight. I'm looking for my pumpkin. My aunt sucks. I need to get home before 12. Mm. Someday I my need... prince will come. Mm, oh, that's yeah, bad, that, isn't it? I get it. Yeah. yeah. Photo prince. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Prince. Yeah. <sighs> mm. yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's awful. I give up on that. Anyway, jokes. terrible Good. jokes aside, <laughs> what's your next adventure going to be? Mm. Oh, yeah. Tell them. So, uh, we're going to go and jump out of a plane. Nice. Well, I can tell you, jumping out of a plane is anything but peaceful. <laughs> oh, have you done it? Yeah, I thought I told you. No. Oh, right. no. <laughs> when was this? Oh, I mean, it was a few years ago now. So just one of the exercises we had to do. Just in case we ever do have to jump out of a plane, they just want you to be ready for it. So all the, me and the lads just all got in a plane and then just dived out. Did you enjoy it? Um, I mean, I got told to do it, so I don't really, I can't really say I enjoyed it. But it is, yeah, it's exhilarating anyway. You'll, you'll absolutely love it. You, not so much. No, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> die on the way down. No, come on. <laughs> oh. Maybe one day. What is, what is this? Oh, I need someone to have a drink with me because this one's never gonna share a whiskey with me, sure. Careful, mm. careful, not after wine. Oh, come on. I wouldn't mix it, but you know, it's your hangover. Yeah. Ah, he's a big boy, he can handle himself. Yeah, really I am a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> sure I am. Uh, cheers. So how's the writing going? Mm. Well, um, still going. Tough to get into. Mm. Oh, come on, it's better than that. Tell them about the publisher. Publisher? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I got in touch with this guy and I'm meeting him in, in February. Um, just making final changes to the book. Oh, great. So I guess it's smooth sailing from then on. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, still be some time before it gets released. All oh, right. So it could be a while then. Yeah, well, it takes a long time to get it done properly, doesn't it? Hmm. Of course. I had a mate who got a book published. Some kind of horror. I think from beginning to end it was about six years. But obviously, you know, you keep going if you're passionate about it. Well, and as long as you have the support. <laughs> Say it all goes well. And in two years, you're a fully-fledged author. What's the next book about? Well, um, depending on Megan, might be a romance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I, I, I think I'm pretty drunk. <laughs> Let me just go to the toilet. In. 
What's up? The other day when I said every little detail, what exactly did you think that meant? Sorry? The other day when I said every little detail, what exactly did you think that meant? What's wrong? What's wrong is you didn't tell me everything, did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Tell you where I live. I have been back and forth, chasing guys in masks around this rainy shithole. And the guy who killed my sister is someone you know. You never knew someone in your hiking group could be so fucked in the head that he could do something like this. What? One of the hikers? Who? I thought we were friends. Do you want us to be friends? Do you want me to go to York? Do you want me to visit Tom and Pippa and dissolve their little bodies with potassium hydroxide until they turn into that stuff that you pour down your kitchen sink? You need to tell me everything. Do you understand? Tell me about Simon and why you didn't think to mention his dead wife. Simon? Oh. And that he believes in some Twilight Zone bullshit. Why don't we start with where he lives? Now really isn't the time to get all quiet on me. Where the fuck is he? He's a... <laughs> He's in my living. He just, he just, he just came by. He was on his way to the festival. He asked me to come with him. All right, all right. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to go back inside. You're going to introduce me. And we're all going to have a cup of tea. Okay? <laughs> I need to be sure. So let me do my thing. Be his friend. Keep calm and follow my lead. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Simon, this is Martin. All right. Hi. I just, uh, <clears throat> pop by. I was just on my way into town. Ah, me too. Oh, fan of the festival. Not really. I like the buzz, I suppose. We were going to go for a bike to eat. Not sure where. Oh, really? Sorry, I just barge in and spoil all your plans. No, it's, it's, it's not a problem. Well, I'm, you know, I mean, we could go together, maybe. No, 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 it's fine. Don't worry. I'm, I'm meeting the lads in town in a bit. But, you know, we have time for a cup of tea. Praise not for another half an hour. So how do you guys know each other? 
Um, well, Martin is... Um, a consultant at Parsons & Co. I'm based in Manchester, but I travel up and down all the time. We catch up whenever I'm in the area. Tess says the managers can be a real pain. Utter arseholes. Just got to put up with them, I suppose. What do you do again? I'm an electrician. Sort of semi-retired. I'm my own boss. Wish I could be. No one breathing down your neck. Yeah. That'd be the life. Yeah. It has its ups. Get a lot of time for the lakes then, I guess. Definitely. After 14 years and finally getting this place, Hated it when I first moved here. You did? My wife was the instigator. She was the one that used to frequent here when she was younger. Wife? I was married for 19 years. She sounds like a determined woman. She was. Oh, sorry. Nothing to worry about. At some point we'll have to move on, don't we? This cup of tea's taking a long time. Aren't we going to be moving in a bit? Got time for a quick one. Really don't want to miss that festival. I'm quite hungry. Haven't had anything to eat all day. Big dates can do that to you. Me and my wife were the same. You know the nervous thing does work sometimes. Ladies can like a guy who's a little bit unsure. I'm not unsure. Oh, good then. I think tonight maybe this is going to go your way. I do. Two sugars, right? Thank you. How'd you take it? Come on, you know. Close. Sorry. So your wife's from Manchester? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Does she like hiking? She'd always come out with us one day. No, she's not really into that sort of thing. She's a bit of a bookworm, to be honest. <laughs> Studies a lot about ancient history and mythology. What was the last thing she was hung up on recently? It was, um... Mythical figures in English folklore. Owl people. Ferryman. The merchant. Some fascinating characters. I mean, it's all bullshit, really, but makes for a good read. I think it's about time we kind of left for a table. We booked it for half past. Table? I thought you hadn't decided where you were going to eat yet. No, we, we hadn't. Well, then, I best be off. The lads will be brawling by now. Simon, just wanted to say I've got a lot of admiration for you. I know if I ever lost my wife, I don't think I'd ever be able to move on. But now I know that after the worst has happened to you, there's still a chance to power through. 
guess the main thing to overcome is the fact that no matter what, that person will always be dead.
Are you there? I did it! I got the last one! It's time! I'm ready! Please! Where is she? No one else here. Only me. Wake up, you piece of shit. We're not even started yet. No. No, no, come on, you prick! No! We're not done yet! We're not done yet! What was all that about? What was what about? You, you don't even realise you're doing it, do you? You know what? It doesn't matter, forget it. Hold on. <laughs> I came here to forget what I'm doing over there. To see you and to have a laugh with my family. So just maybe I can take some of that good stuff back with me. Yeah, I know. And it's not about why you came. It's, it's the stuff that you're bringing with you that worries me. Right. Oh, so boy. how about we play that game with sticky labels? Okay. So everyone gets a sticky label mm -hmm. and then you write down the name of a famous person or character and mm -hmm. then you stick it on the person next to you's head mm -hmm. and then you have to guess who you are. Right. Yes or no questions only. More like Robin Hood or something. Oh. It's not fair. It's not fair. Hey. Who the fuck are you? Who are you?
Are you with him? Another psycho fuck! You wanna fuck with me? Eh? Fuck with my family! What the fuck is this? Who are you? It's okay. You've been through a lot. I understand. You've killed a man. I, I, I did. Who, who, who are you? Was he your first? You see? You're trained for this. You can handle it. Hey, look at me. Look at me. You did the right thing. He killed your sister. But it's not enough. All the horrific things I did to people in those prisons. For, for, for a name. A number. Some of them didn't even know. But him, a murderer, he killed my sister and he got away easily. It's not fair. Why did he get to do what he did and escape all that pain? He deserved more. For what he did to her. You just wanted to see your baby sister again. You want to see her again, don't you? Well. What if there was something I could do about that? What do you want in return?
the storms for to rise.